sorry about that. All right, so we are Facebook Live, and um, uh, I'm Jackie Rose, and with Jackie's Whole Food Plant Based Journey YouTube channel, and we are going live right now on Zoom and Facebook with Colin McCuller of the Healthy Vegan Cookbook, and I love this cookbook mainly because it's because of me it was created well not really but <laughs> i want to say i have a little something to do with it you My played a part <laughs> yeah exactly i did and uh i just want to say that um colin uh i used to run a little little rinky dink wellness center in milford massachusetts and i shouldn't say rinky dink it was very nice and before colin made this cookbook he came and taught us cooking classes, um, you know, vegan cooking classes, very healthy. And we had such a good time with him. And every time he came to teach us, he would say, uh, we would say to him and me, I, I'm the one that said it. And maybe a few other people have said it too. I said, you have to, you have to have a cookbook. These recipes are amazing and easy and healthy and delicious. And a few years later, and I think a lot of people kept telling him, the same thing and not only did he create uh finally put together this cookbook but as soon as it came out you know I, I got a few copies actually and gave them to friends and I read through it and I just was so impressed I mean extremely impressed with how this this came out so uh Colin uh thank you for being here and this is our very first interview of a series of interviews I'm going to be doing with people who have gone whole food plant-based. And I want to find out how, and I have recently, if people have been watching my crazy YouTube videos my, on my journey, I just started three months ago. And I've been wanting to do this for, ever since Colin was teaching us, but I just couldn't stick with it or get going. And I finally went on a retreat that got me going. And it's called the Plant Life Journey Retreat in Michigan. And um, so I've been doing it for three months and having a great time. And, I, and, and because of that, I have taken, you know, taken out the cookbook and been looking through it and uh, I just love it. So, um, so again, the series of interviews of finding out from people who have gone whole food plant-based how they have benefited from it. So Colin is going to not only tell us his story um, on, on how, you know, maybe why he went whole food plant-based and, uh, and, and how it has benefited him. Not only, I mean, obviously we know it benefited him through a cookbook, right? And he's been on <laughs> yes. Chef AJ, if you know him, but also he's going to give us a cooking demo. And I think you're doing the Black Forest smoothie. That's it. Yeah. So we're in for a real treat because we're going to get a recipe demo as well. So Colin, uh, uh, please take it away and tell us why you went whole food plant-based and how it has benefited you and your family. All right. Well, I should first say that, you know, with the cookbook, uh, this actually came out or this actually arrived at my doorstep four years ago today. So it's the anniversary of me first receiving this book. And it went uh, on sale on Amazon and everything, all of that uh, a little bit later on. But it was the first time I opened up the box and there's all these books and actually being able to see this thing in print was uh, was pretty amazing. And of course, now I am a multimillionaire, uh, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> because of the book. Uh, but no, it's it's been a lot of fun. Um, I guess, uh, you know, to kind of zoom back uh, years and years ago. Um, when I went to college, I actually went to a school that um, had a lot, it was a music school, and uh, there was a, a large uh, Asian population uh, at the school, and so most of the food there was vegetarian, so that's 27 years ago now. Um, I was able to eat really well, you know, everybody's making the food for me in the cafeteria, I was able to eat really well as a vegetarian, and so I kind of started that way, and then um, about a year later, kind of the more I started reading about, uh, you know, vegetarian versus veganism. I mean, 27 years ago, I didn't even know what vegan or whole food plant based was at all. Um, and then I became vegan. And then, you know, years later, I actually went on the uh, holistic holiday at sea 
uh, cruise that's out of uh, Miami. Oh, and wow. uh, so it's a it's a, like a week and a half uh, whole food plant based uh, cruise where they do a lot of cooking demos. That's where I met Chef AJ. And, uh, you know, there's all kinds of different workshops to get to float around the Caribbean, have a great time. And um, so, you know, the cooking demos, though, those were really what drew me in. And, you know, when I went on the cruise and I saw Chef AJ and she's awesome, she's amazing. Um, you know, I really wanted to come back to Massachusetts where I lived at the time and, you know, be able to teach because, you know, Chef AJ can't be everywhere. <laughs> so <laughs> I wanted to kind of help and share, you know, what I've learned. Uh, as a as a vegan for for 27 26 27 years now uh, you know there were no convenience foods when I first started as a vegan uh, so I really had to you know jump in and learn how to cook and so you know the the cookbook the healthy vegan cookbook is really sort of the culmination of of everything that I had learned about cooking up to that point you know sort of my style of cooking I like to have a lot of smoothies uh, for breakfast, uh, you know, I'm often I make breakfast and I'm on the go and I like to have something that I can just sort of drink over the course of the morning, keeps me full, keep, you know, give me lots of energy. Uh, so that I have a lot of smoothies. Um, I also do a lot of bowl meals. Uh, so I like a lot of grain bowls for dinner, uh, you know, where I'll just have kind of a collection of stuff in a bowl and then put a really good sauce on it. And it tastes fantastic. So you know, that was something with my two kids who are now uh, 20, 21 and 24, my two boys, uh, they've always been vegan. And, uh, you know, it's one thing for me to try and eat healthy, but, you know, to try and get my kids to eat healthy, um, then, and, you know, coming up with recipes, uh, if they were really healthy, and if I could get them to, you know, if they asked for seconds and thirds, then, you know, I knew that I was on to good recipes. So that's sort of where I came from. But, I do want to make a distinction, though, uh, before I went on the cruise, uh, the whole food plant based cruise, um, I was definitely still using a lot of oil and uh, in all the sauces and things that I made. And that was really a big change for me uh, going on the holistic holiday at sea cruise. Um, they, by the way, they do that once a year, like at the end of February, beginning of March every year, once a year. Um, and, you know, for me you know, they, they don't use any oil or salt or sugar and, you know, the salt and the sugar, I didn't care about so much, but the oil, I used oil all the time mm -hmm. and to try and learn how to cook without using oil, um, you know, was a really big shift for me. And then on top of that, you know, as I, you know, really started to try and eat more whole foods and, you know, kind of lay off some of the jig, the vegan junk food that's out there, uh, really, I felt so much better. So, you know, when I became vegetarian, I felt a little bit better health wise. Uh, when I became vegan, I felt a tremendous difference in my health, you know, how I felt. And that was, you know, as a 20 year old kid, I had plenty of energy anyway, but I had even more. And then, you know, when I became whole food plant based and really, you know, cut out using a lot of the oil and salt and sugar and everything and really tried to focus more on uh, whole food, you know, unprocessed ingredients as much as possible, then, um, you know, it just, and again, you know, felt so much different, felt so much better. So, you know, you have taken an amazing leap where, you know, you're going like, you know, all the way in, in one shot. And, you know, I had to like, sort of take steps over time to get there, but, you know, hats off to you. For, uh, well, for it's taken right me in. three, yeah, but take me three years of wanting to do this. I remember three years ago, I um, texted my cousin. I said, I'm starting uh, going vegan today. She goes, ha ha, let's see how long that lasts, right? And she was right. It lasted till about 10 a.m. But, uh, <laughs> and that was my story. I've been trying to do this for years. I go back and I see notes that I wrote down food plans, you know, of, of all the foods. And I, so I have the knowledge a little bit, but not enough. And uh, so, yeah, so yeah, and now it's just kind of easy because I think I discovered like like your cookbook, I've discovered there are really easy recipes, but also I'm willing to cook now also. Um, but the, um, there was one other thing I was gonna say. Uh, oh, but I'm not 100%. And I keep telling that to people on my, my videos. I think I'm 90%. Uh, I still dabbling in like a, a little, well, the only thing I'm really doing is um, 
uh, I'm, I am still having breakfast sandwiches, you know, mm-hmm. which, you know, once in a while and they're getting more frequent and I'm trying to give those up again. And, um, and that's the right. only thing I do. And then I get some sushi once in a while, but that's yeah. it. Other than that, I am pretty much sticking with it. It's turned into confessional hour already. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And I forgot to read your intro, which I will do before you start our cooking demo, uh, which, you know, a lot of it you've said, but still. Um, so I want to ask you one more question before uh, the cooking demo, or sure. if there's anything else you wanted to mention. Um, your kids, so I remember uh, one of the things I really remembered taking your classes, and we're talking about seven, eight years ago, I think that we were attending your classes. And I remember you mentioned your kids and it was so inspiring that you would tell us that, you know, your, your two boys actually liked this food. How have they benefited, do you think, um, from eating this way? Sure. Well, when they were younger, I mean, they're kind of grown up now, but uh, when they were younger, like when they were in scouts, for instance, uh, my older son said that, you know, if he would go away, you know, for a scout weekend or something for camping, and he would sort of have to bring like his own, you know, food for the weekend. And all of the kids would kind of, you know, laugh a little bit and like kind of, you know, poke fun at him and say like, hey, vegan. And he would just kind of laugh and say like, you know, is that supposed to be, are you making fun of me? Like, he's like, you know, I can outrun everybody in this group. I'm stronger than everybody. So like, if that's supposed to be an insult, then it's kind of dumb. So <laughs> <laughs> I you love know, that. They, <laughs> they, you know, they've always been, uh, they've always done really well, you know, health wise, uh, you know, the, their doctor was always thrilled with them. Um, you know, it's never, never, never been a difficult thing, you know, that way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. I, I think that's great that you were able to raise them um, like that. Uh, and, and on your own, I mean, you, I ha- hope you don't mind me saying this, but I know that you were divorced, right? Yeah. Right. And so yeah. you were kind of doing this just without, just when you, when you were with them, you know, like that was your influence. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, they grew up vegan and uh, my ex-wife was vegan also. So, oh. you know, they were, they were in both houses, they were having that uh, but, you know, they really kind of rolled their eyes at me when I really started to go whole foods and, you know, cut out the oil. And they would kind of tease me a little bit and say, like, oh, you, you're allowed one drop of oil a day or else you're going to, you know, dissolve. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I mean, one of the things like one of the ways that I really developed the, the you know, the style of cooking that I do is, you know, because of my kids, because you know, oftentimes I would come home from work, I'd have like 10 or 15 minutes before I got to throw them in the car and go to karate or something. And I have 10 to 15 minutes. And, you know, it's really easy to just go for the convenience foods at that point, grab something on the go, but you know, that's probably not going to be very healthy. So, you know, I really tried to develop recipes where, and systems where, you know, I could just start pulling stuff out and have something ready in 10 or 15 minutes and then, you know, be out the door. So convenience was definitely a really big thing, a uh, really important thing for me, uh, you know, as my kids were growing up, for sure. Wow, that's wonderful. That's so fabulous. And I'm sure that what you just said is going to help um, other people that might be raising children. And um, so, okay, is there anything else you wanted to add before we do our cooking demo? Sure. Um, you know, I've, I've done a lot of teaching uh, since I since I did that cruise originally uh, at libraries. And right now I teach a, um, a series of classes at uh, Maine General uh, Hospital uh, in uh, Augusta. They have a teaching kitchen. So, you know, never know where it takes you. But, um, uh, you know, people in the classes that I take mostly are not vegetarian or vegan. They're just kind of curious about it and they want to learn some healthier recipes. And, you know, maybe they're not ready to, you know, take the the full dive in, but, you know, they're definitely curious about it. And, you know, the thing that people, one thing that really holds a lot of people back, I find, is the nutritional part of it. You know, they're really worried about, you know, getting enough protein and like all the nutrients they need and everything. And, you know, it's, it, I, I totally understand that. 
but at the same time, like from my perspective as a vegan for 27 years, uh, that feels totally backwards to, you know, I, I, I totally get it, but it feels totally backwards because, you know, if you eat whole food plant-based and you eat a variety of different vegetables, if you get, you know, a lot of servings of, uh, you know, fruit and vegetables every day, if you have some whole grains every day, some beans, you know, some plant-based protein sources, you know, you are definitely going to get enough protein. Like there's no question whatsoever. Like, you know, if you go to the hospital in the ER, you know, there's not a group of people, not a group of vegetarians, you know, sitting there uh, dying of protein deficiency. It's, it's not, <laughs> not a thing. Um, you know, if you are really worried, you can take a multivitamin. Uh, you know, there are a couple of things like B12 that you have to be, you know, have some awareness about. But for the most part, you know, just eating a really good variety of healthy foods uh, you know, you're practically invincible, really. I mean, I haven't been sick in 27 years. Ooh. And I would. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, I just get, I call it like my extra two weeks of vacation every, every year because <laughs> I, I just, I get two, two extra weeks of sick pay uh, from work. And then, you know, I just tell my boss like, hey, I think I'm going to be sick, you know, <laughs> in a couple of days. And so I just get extra vacation every year. But you so, really uh, have never been sick in 27 years? I haven't, no. That's amazing to me. Oh, I've never heard of that. I mean, that is really amazing. Yeah. See, and those are the those are the things I want to hear from people. Um, that to me, because that's what has inspired me to go whole food plant-based. Everything you just said, you know, just hearing about other people's um, health, you know, results from doing this. Yeah. Um, so that's wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Did you ever I see the you. documentary, uh, The Game Changers? Yes. Game Changers. About the athletes. I've seen so many, and I'd like to watch them again. But Game Changers, um, Eating You Alive. Have you seen yeah. that one? Eating uh, You Alive. Um, forks Over Knives, of course. Oh, yeah. I always tell people start with Forks Over Knives, you know, yep. to to start. And then I love, uh, uh, I think it's Dr. Michael Clapper with a K. He's mm -hmm. got a YouTube seminar that really impacted me as well. But those um, those videos definitely. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought Game Changers was great. I mean, I'm definitely not a professional athlete or athlete by any means. But, you know, to see all of these people who are professional athletes who go vegan, plant, you know, whole food, plant based, and they all just kind of look at it and say, you know, it's my superpower as mm. a as a professional athlete. You know, everybody thinks like if I stop eating meat, I'm going to be scrawny and weak and, you know, all of that. And they're like. It's the opposite. Like you are stronger and, you know, more invincible if you eat really well. You know, if you don't put a bunch of junk in your body, <laughs> as it turns out, it, your body seems to work a lot better. Exactly. Exactly. And I remember one thing that you said in the classes, and I, I, and I, I think you still say it, and I, it has stuck with me. And it says, you know, when you eat these things like a, ham, like a McDonald's hamburger or something, your body doesn't know what to do with it. And you were all about, these are foods that your body was, was meant to know what to do with it, to break it down, to flush it out, to do whatever. Yeah. 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 And, you know, you don't have to really get, you know, too far into the nutritional part of it to find out that, you know, if you just look at a chart of, you know, how long food hangs out in your system, uh, you know, like fruit takes about 30 minutes to digest, you know, your body just knows exactly what to do with that breaks it down really fast. Uh, you know, some of the, the whole food grains, uh, vegetables, you know, a couple of hours, it's pretty easy. But you know, a lot of meat, it's usually a couple of days, and it just kind of hangs around. And you know, and never you, mind. Yeah, yeah. And then not in meat, but then you've got your processed foods, and you're this and with all those chemicals. And so right. Okay, well, um, I think it's time for the cookie demo because I can't wait to see. And also, I'm going to put some links to your YouTube channel because Colin has some wonderful videos that are like the, the kind that shows the music and it's fast. And I love those. You've got a few of those wonderful recipes. Um, and so I'll put those in the in the description. Um, okay, so I, 
I'm going to read Colin's um, intro now because I forgot to read it before, but, and you've already heard a lot of it, but Colin has been vegan for over 25 years. He enjoys teaching people new ways to incorporate whole foods, plant-based meals into their diet. Um, he's the author of two cookbooks. I keep forgetting about the second one, the Healthy Vegan Cookbook, which we have right here. I highly recommend right. it. It's on Amazon. Thank you. And and I've mentioned it a few times in my YouTube um, videos, Jackie's Whole Food Plant Based Journey, and um, and smoothies that taste like Girl Scout cookies. Yes. And they do. I've tasted them. <laughs> yes. And That's yeah. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh, I'm going to get that. And so Colin is a sh Colin is chef dad to two vegan boys now in their 20s. And there's a picture of them on his website and they're adorable. And outside of the kitchen, he works as a home energy auditor. Colin and his wife, Sarah, live, he's kind of a newlywed, right? He just got married not too long yes. ago. A couple yeah, years. Three years ago. Yeah, yeah. So Colin and his wife, Sarah, live in central Maine, where he teaches vegan cooking classes at Maine General Hospital and out of his own home kitchen. And he, you can see lots of videos of him on Chef AJ's YouTube channel. And there are some other ones out there as well. So, OK, Colin, take it away. All right. So we are going to do, like you said, the Black Forest smoothie. And so this is a combination of chocolate and cherry. So, you know, when people say to me, uh, you know, it must be a sacrifice, you know, trying to eat healthy all the time. It must feel like a sacrifice. You know, meanwhile, I'm sipping my, you know, chocolate cherry smoothie and saying, yeah, yeah, sacrifice. Yeah. Like, give me some more sacrifice. Right. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, sometimes I see people, you know, doing the oatmeal and stuff for breakfast. And to me, like, that's the most boring thing in the world. Uh, you know, having a smoothie that I can take with me, it tastes delicious. Uh, you know, I love teaching this uh, recipe in classes in groups of people so that they can try some of the samples because like they see all the healthy stuff that goes into it and then they taste it and they say, oh, my God, like, I can't believe this. This doesn't taste healthy. <laughs> it tastes like junk food. <laughs> so this this smoothie is actually uh, was named one of the top uh, smoothies in the world uh, by Veg News magazine. Uh, which if you are not like in the vegetarian vegan world, you might not have heard of that. But in that world, Veg News Magazine is like the biggest magazine uh, for vegetarians and vegans. So I entered a contest. They had hundreds of entries. And so mine was chosen as one of the, the top 10. So, oh my gosh, I, that's amazing. I get, to, I get to have that accolade. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Glad you mentioned that. That's awesome. So for this recipe, uh, we're going to use a blender. Uh, I have the Vitamix. Uh, Jackie, you almost you were going to sell your Vitamix when you were <laughs> leaving Massachusetts. I almost bought it, but I already have. Oh, it. <laughs> oh! Uh -uh. I would have given it to you. Did I? Oh, oh. no! I, ha I have I have one already, and it lasts okay. forever, so <laughs> that's fine. Um, but you know, so you don't need to have a, a Vitamix. Uh, I always recommend Vitamix as, uh, you know, of all the different, you know, kitchen gadgets and appliances I have, the really good blender is going to be really the key uh, to making smoothies and sauces and soups and all that kind of stuff. So if you're going to invest money in something, I would say definitely a really good blender. Uh, Vitamix is kind of expensive, uh, but you can certainly get them new or used, uh, reconditioned. You can get, you know, if you have like a Nutribullet or a Ninja, you can make this, it's fine. It's just the Vitamix makes it really smooth. So for this one, I'm, I always put in a base of um, and of either nuts or oats or something like that. Uh, I'll actually uh, um, email you the recipe afterwards, and then you can just post it in the notes if you want. Uh, so everybody, uh, whoever doesn't have to write it down. But I usually put in uh, about a third of a cup of rolled oats. So just regular old oats. So, you know, I get my oats too but I don't, you know, feel bored with oatmeal. All right, and then I'm going to add two cups of water to that. All right, so this is going to be the base of the smoothie. So I always like to blend this up for, for a minute uh, just to make sure that, you know, the base of it is all blended. So I'm essentially making fresh oat milk uh, this way. If you wanted to use a third of a cup of, of almonds or something like that, then you're making fresh almond milk. 
but whatever it is, you don't need to strain it out. The you know blender is going to blend everything together. Uh, so you're going to get all of that fiber uh, from the oats or the nuts or whatever. So I'm just going to run this for just a minute and let this start here. Well, I take a drink. And while he's doing that, I have to say that um, it's because of Colin that I know how to make my own almond milk. And I've been doing it ever since he taught us several years ago. Well, I kind of stopped and then I started again, but I did it for a long time. It's yeah, it's really easy and it tastes so much better. Uh, your own homemade almond milk, so much better than what you're going to get at the store that's kind of flavorless. And, uh, you know, it's really actually really cheap just to make your own, uh, <laughs> you know, versus what you buy at the store. It's so, quicker too. Yeah. Yeah. So I put in uh, the third of a cup of rolled oats in here, uh, two cups of water, and then I'm going to put in. Uh, I always uh, have bags of frozen bananas. Uh, so I'll just buy a couple of bunches at a time from the store. Uh, I'll wait until uh, they're ripe. So, you know, yellow with those few brown spots on them. And then I'll peel them, I'll break them in half, and then I'll put them in the freezer in a Ziploc bag. And so I always have frozen bananas on hand because I like to make a lot of smoothies. So bananas help to make a smoothie nice and creamy. And then I'm going to add a cup and a half of frozen cherries. So, you know, you can certainly use fresh cherries if you want, but, uh, you know, who's got the time? You got to pit them, you know, it's, uh, just buy them frozen. You have them on hand all the time. I didn't even know they came frozen. See, that's how inexperienced I am. Frozen yep, uh, cherries, never knew there was such a thing. Yep, regular supermarkets should have uh, frozen cherries along with all the other frozen fruits as well. So oh, I love that. it. And then we're going to put in some dates. So, uh, you know, no stranger to you, uh, whole food plant-based, uh, sweetener of choice, medjool dates. Uh, so I get the kind that's pitted so that you don't have to break your jaw and uh, <laughs> so that you don't have to remember to take the pit. So uh, I just get these from a regular supermarket. Um, you know, it used to be years ago that you had, it was like specialty food kind of thing, but all regular supermarkets have mutual dates now. So there's that. Uh, also, I add some cacao powder, which you can see here. So cacao is really just, uh, it's cocoa powder, but it's, um, it's not cooked, so it's raw. Uh, so this is what is giving chocolate its flavor. And so, you know, when people say uh, chocolate has antioxidants in it, um, you know, it's not wishful thinking, it really does. Uh, it does have health properties to it. Uh, it is an antioxidant. Mm -hmm. However, when you take cacao and you mix it in with a bunch of fat and sugar, then, mm -hmm. you know, maybe chocolate's not quite as healthy. But, you know, this is the thing that has all the nutrients in it. So this is a little weird in a supermarket. This, in my supermarket, this is sold in like the diet section because like they don't know what to do with it. But <laughs> baking section, diet section, I'm going to put in about two tablespoons here. And so this is giving you the chocolate flavor, but without all of the uh, fat and the sugar. All right, so there's the cacao. Uh, you can just use regular cocoa if that's what you have, but I like to you know, try and get something less processed if I can. All right, and then I'm going to add in, uh, on all my smoothies, I add in a tablespoon of seeds uh, just to kind of get a little extra protein, a little extra nutrients. So this is the chia seeds. You can use flax seeds. You can use um, uh, hemp seeds. Uh, you know, if you have a really good blender, it's not going to matter. They don't really have much of a taste. So it's just going to blend right in. And it's just like a little extra shot of nutrition there. All right, tablespoon of that. I'm going to put in about a teaspoon of vanilla. All right. So I'm not going to measure it. Just going to. Uh, eyeball oh, there. I could never do that. I almost did that the other day. I'm like, maybe I could just pour it in. I'm going to no, I don't trust myself yet. <laughs> All right. This is one of the secret ingredients here. So this is almond, there we go, <gasps> almond extract. So Ooh. if you add just a little bit, uh, I usually put in about a half a teaspoon almond extract that really kind of boosts up the cherry flavor and makes it really super strong cherry flavor in the smoothie. So just gonna put a little bit of that in here. Doesn't really take much. A little bit goes a long way there. And then the extra super special secret ingredient here 
is espresso powder. Ooh. So this is kind of a specialty ingredient. You don't have to use this, but it really kind of takes it over the edge. So espresso powder is just ground uh, espresso beans. And so you really just use a little bit, like a quarter of a teaspoon. So you don't even want to taste espresso in this. It's just a little bit. Espresso powder is sort of the, the baker's secret, uh, right? So they add this into chocolate recipes just a little bit. Um, and that actually kind of gives the chocolate a little bit more depth of flavor. Um, oh but if you, only, if you only use a quarter of a teaspoon, you're not going to taste it. I'm adding that so. to my shopping list right now. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it can be a little hard to find in stores. I just get it from Amazon. Uh, they just deliver it right to your door. Piece of cake. And uh, so this, I, well. <laughs> <laughs> I always keep this in the refrigerator because it does uh, start to like cake up after a while. Um, oh. But in the fridge, it'll keep the moisture, the humidity out of it. So there's espresso powder. All right. And I will run this just for a minute here. And... You'll hear uh, when I'm running the blender, I always start it on low uh, because the Vitamix is really powerful. I don't want to like explode it all over my ceiling. Uh, so you start it kind of low. One of the great things with the Vitamix is it's variable speed so you can control how fast it is. So I'll start it low and then just kind of ramp it up and then get it to where it's really blending. So I'm just going to do that for a minute here. I add frozen cherries too to my list. Frozen cherries. Oh, it's all, all right. wet. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to, I will usually let this run for several minutes just to make sure that it's totally smooth. So I don't want to bore you and make you <laughs> have to watch <laughs> for three minutes, but just trust me, it comes out really super smooth. I'll put it in a mason jar. Uh, this is a quart, uh, you know, I might put it in a couple of pint jars and then just take one for breakfast and then have the other one for breakfast the next day. Um, you know, it does freeze uh, very well. So if you wanted to freeze it, you could certainly do that. Uh, and, you know, with the four dates uh, and all the fruit in it, it definitely has a lot of natural sugar to it, which really gives you a lot of energy, uh, you know. It's the smoothie's really good, but you're not going to want to just slam it. You, you really want to just kind of drink it slowly over the course of the morning and not just drink it all at once because, you know, kind of a lot of, of, of sugar, natural sugar to all have at the same time. But really, if you have this over the course of the morning, it does make a, about a quart. And uh, you just drink that over the course of the morning. And I always have lots of energy and uh, keeps me full. You know, I'm not I'm not starving. By the time I get to lunch and, uh, you know, it tastes amazing. So uh, that's usually what I like to have for breakfast is some kind of a smoothie like that. That is awesome. And I just realized I forgot to record this. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be recorded on Facebook. Oh. But I forgot to record <laughs> it for the Zoom. Too many things <laughs> to do. Um, yep. But I bet I can still, I, I think I can still upload it to YouTube. I think I've done that before. So, okay. yeah. Um, but, uh, wow, that was fabulous, Colin. This has been so much fun. I want to do this again with you next week. <laughs> a weekly, a weekly I'll show. be happy to come back again. I just yeah. wish that, uh, I was able to, you know, share it in person, uh, so that, you know, everybody could, could try it, but, you know, online, I, I have to take it upon myself to drink it all. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that people have to make it themselves. Yes. I mean, you, it very easy. You sh you know you showed us um, how easy it is, and if they want to make more, they can get your book on Amazon and show us the other one again. Also, the smoothies one. Yeah, that this one. That, yeah. It's that one Look that's available that. on Amazon uh, in print and an ebook as well. It's you can see it's it's only the ten uh, Girl Scout book. Uh, Girl Scout cookie flavors, but in the healthy vegan cookbook, I have 30 different smoothie recipes. And, you know, after a while, I kind of got bored of just like throwing a bunch of fruit and, you know, some almond milk in a, in a blender and make a smoothie. I really wanted it to be, you know, taste like dessert. So, you know, I started to write recipes like 
the Black Forest smoothie. I wrote um, like the uh, uh, let's see, carrot cake smoothie. I like to really like to make that one. I mean, how can you get bored drinking something for breakfast that tastes like carrot cake? I mean, come on. <laughs> hey, I just opened up the book and I opened up to strawberry rhubarb crisp smoothie. Oh yeah, absolutely. And gingerbread smoothie and kiwi elegance green smoothie and hibiscus. Oh my God, it goes on and on and on. Hibiscus peach ginger smoothie, blackberry cobbler's. I mean, it goes on. Grasshopper. Oh, I like grasshopper because <laughs> that's like mint, right? Chocolate oh yeah, mint. absolutely. I love that. Oh, it goes on and on and on. And then of course there's other things like tofu dish, like meals and sauces. So it has everything in this book and I, I love it. I love it. So um, all get approved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you so much, Colin. It's great to see you again. And uh, you thank you. we'll definitely do this again for sure. Okay. You got it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to end the meeting. Bye. Thanks okay. for watching, everyone.